برامجنا في راديو بلدي كل يوم جمعة من الثامنة وحتى التاسعة صباحا مع ليلى الحسيني في بث حي ومباشر وعبر دبليو ان زي كي راديو 690 اي ام صباح الخير بلدي صباح الخير لكل مستمعينا Welcome to Radio Baladi the first Arab, Middle Eastern and American simulcast radio show Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNCK 690 AM from 8 until 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Husseini. Our call in number 248-557-3300. And now, stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host, Layla Al Husseini. <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. It's Friday, June 21st, 2019, and I'm Ray Hanania, special U.S. correspondent for the Arab News newspaper, and you're listening to the Arab Street Radio and Podcast broadcast from Detroit, Michigan, through 690 AM WNZK Radio. I enjoy the party train with Crystal Mayo, and I love her music. Here's a shout-out to her again. She does a great job getting everybody warmed up and ready and alive, so uh, I appreciate all the work she does. Um, the Arab Street Radio and Podcast, part of the U.S. Arab Radio Network, hosted by Layla al in an effort to energize and empower Arab Americans to stand up for their rights. For more information, you can go to my website at hanania.com, and afterwards you can get the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or by visiting my podcast website, thearabstreet.org. Our radio call-in number is 248 248- Five five seven thirty three hundred, and as you know, that if you're outside of the greater Detroit region, you can listen to the show online using one of several online links on TuneIn.com and at the uh, Layla's website at ArabRadio.us. All great uh, connections that come in really good. Um, the radio uh, topic this morning include, uh, and this is really kind of shocking. To wake up last night, uh, President Trump was going to bomb Iran. And he made the threats. He gave the order, and then he changed his mind. Uh, now, I knew electing Trump was going to really kind of shake up everything. I didn't know it was going to start war that quickly. But uh, this guy, uh, he'll do almost anything, I guess. I don't know. And it's reckless, as usual. But nobody cares about facts. Nobody cares about truth. They just do whatever they want. They claimed that the Iranians shot down a U.S. drone over uh, the Gulf of Oman. They also claimed that uh, the Iranians bombed some ship in Oman. The Iranians say the drone was actually shot down because it drifted over Iranian territory and wasn't, you know, over the Gulf of Oman. Which, by the way, at the point, is very close to where the United Arab Emirates and Oman come close. You know, at the end of the Persian Gulf, and the beginning of the Gulf of Oman. By the way, everybody calls it the Persian Gulf, but I don't care. I call it the Arabian Gulf. I don't care. Everybody yells at me for saying that. But it's the Arabian Gulf, folks. So, get used to it. That's what we're going to call it, the Arabian Gulf. That's my take, and I'm sticking by it. But anyway, um, last night he ordered attacks on a variety of sites in Iran. And as it turns out, um, he just decided at the last minute not to strike. Now, he's launched, I think, two uh, attacks on foreign countries um, since he's become president. So this guy is a war-ready, you know, you know, he's ready. Warmonger, I guess you're ready to call him. He's going to start a war, and I'm laughing because I'm going to tell you what. Uh, he's no different than any other president. How many times we used to attack Iran through Israel. We'd give Israel the money, we'd give Israel the weapon, and Israel would attack Iran. And all kinds of uh, civilians, you know, would die. And, of course, nobody cares because, you know, you put the word Iran. It's a four-letter word. R-A-N-I-R-A-N. Terrible. Four-letter word, 
Um, we're not allowed to uh, you know, uh, acknowledge it. Um, they're evildoers, blah, blah, blah. They want to start a war so bad with Iran, it's on blue. Now, I'm not saying Iran is a good country. Uh, definitely, it's another one of these Saddam Hussein type uh, places. But again, when you look at the history of Iran, it's fascinating. Uh, because part of the problem with all this is we created the situation. And when you tell people that we created the situation in Iran, they get mad at you. They said, don't be blaming today and what happened in the 1950s, but you really have to look back um, and you have to look at the history of, uh, you know, how the U.S. has started wars like in Vietnam. So the idea here is that there's a suspicion that what really happened was that Trump and the U.S. and this guy John Bolton, he's nuts. I debated him on radio once. He really is crazy, John Bolton. And uh, I think he's, I think these guys, I'm laughing because I'm going to tell you what, this is the trouble that we get ourselves in when we, when we become hypocrites and we pretend that for some reason, um, you know, we're doing things the right way when in fact we are not doing the things the right way. It doesn't matter whether it's a Republican or Democrat um, doing it. We've always done things the wrong way. So it, there's a suspicion and a belief that the uh, Trump administration um, and a lot of Democrats are supporting this quietly, but um, that he, they're orchestrating this uh, with this crazy John Bolton, who's a national security advisor. He's a nut. That guy, John R. Bolton, the national security advisor, he's a nutcase. The Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, oh my gosh, this guy's a crazy, you know, whirling dervish. They're both crazy. But listen, this isn't the first time that the U.S. has orchestrated incident they created it so that they could justify a war it happened in 1964 oh yeah now everybody goes oh 1964 why you bring up the well august 2nd 1964 and august 4th 1964 are dates that uh, uh are so significant to americans because 64,000 americans died in vietnam because of those two dates um, on August 2nd, 1964, the U.S. sent the USS Maddox, a destroyer, near Vietnam into the Gulf of Tonkin. And the idea was to provoke confrontation with the North Vietnamese. In other words, they sent the ship in to fight and clash. It was kind of like, you know, a uh, uh, lure. They wanted to they wanted the fight. They wanted um, a justification to get into the war. And remember, uh, Kennedy had been murdered, you know, had just been murdered. And LBJ was now the president. Kennedy was going to take us out of Vietnam. And all the, uh, you know, the uh, military industry, industrial complex in this country, they were upset with Kennedy uh, because they were going to profit. You know, war it was a big deal. And war makes... So I, we can go through that whole thing about Kennedy, but you know my view. I think Kennedy was intentionally um, assassinated with the complicity, I call it conspiridentalism, the process of uh, conspiracy by uh, shared goal. So the FBI hated Kennedy, right? The mob hated Kennedy. The Dallas police hated Kennedy. LBJ hated Kennedy. Um, Fidel Castro and Cuba hated Kennedy. All these important factors. They didn't sit in a room and orchestrate the assassination. But what they did was the FBI, instead of protecting Kennedy, they stepped back. The, the uh, Dallas police, Dallas and LBJ, they hated Kennedy. They hated him. Okay, now they, they've um, uh, they mollified all that and softened it, you know, over the years through writing and stuff. But back then, there was a real hatred. And uh, they all wanted Kennedy dead. And when the threat came, everybody stepped back. And it was easy, you know, for uh, Lee Harvey Oswald to step in, this moron, to step in, get a job overnight, practically, and shoot uh, President Kennedy. Um, much to uh, the satisfaction of all those forces who later said, oh, you know, 
it's a tragedy, but believe me, they wanted it. So Kennedy, so Kennedy dies, and LBJ takes over. What's the first thing he does? He starts planning an escalation of the war in Vietnam with Robert McNamara, you know, the guy who lied, you know, um, about what was going on. He was uh, overseeing the war for the U.S. So LBJ, uh, they come up with this plan to send the USS Maddox into Gulf of Tonkin in, 19, in August 1964, into the waters outside of the Gulf of Tonkin, and uh, intentionally to entice and provoke a fight with the North Vietnamese. Now, the North Vietnamese had these small little torpedo and machine gun boats, and we sent in a destroyer, which was really big. Now, I'm not saying a torpedo wouldn't hurt. You know, you got 76 millimeter, 127 millimeter shells, um, you know, that we had. Uh, much bigger than the ones the Vietnamese had, but the Vietnamese took the bait, that's August 2nd, and confronted the Maddox, and the Maddox pretty much destroyed them all. They killed six uh, Vietnamese sailors, they wounded a bunch, there were no U.S. casualties, there was, the Maddox had no, uh, you know, damage, except for, I think, one bullet hole from a machine gun round you know, during the con confrontation that the Maddox provoked. And then on August 4th, they moved the Maddox into the Gulf of Tonkin two days later, and uh, the military and LBJ that night announced that the U.S. Maddox was attacked viciously by the Vietnamese while it was moored and, you know, in dock at the Gulf of Tonkin. And the U.S. can't stand by and allow these terrorist provocations. They didn't have the same rhetoric, rhetoric that they do today, you know, like the evildoers, you know, uh, the, the terrorists, you know, the, you know, all the escalation and rhetoric. But they had enough, and they said, we need to do something. That faked-up incident, which was only revealed years and years later um, in a lot of writings, um, and including from officials, they said that it was orchestrated, it never happened, there was no provocation, um, that we were the ones that provoked everything. Um, and all the witnesses and all the soldiers at the time basically said nothing happened, and they were shocked when LJ got on TV that night and said, we're going to escalate the war in Vietnam, and as you know, 60, what, thousand American soldiers lost their lives in Vietnam for what? You have to really wonder, what was it for? You know, maybe there was a way to prevent the expansion of communism, you know, through that war, but there might have been other ways to do it that wouldn't have cost 62 plus thousand American lives. And, and, I, and I apologize if I missed some, uh, because the total was more than that 62,000. It's uh, way up there. So they faked this war 1964. Now, and then by 1966, it was like, wow, 500,000 American troops, you know, were sitting out there. They really jacked it up. So you don't think that the same military mind is going to claim that the Iranians attacked some boat in the Gulf of Oman, and now they've attacked some U.S. drone? There's a drone. You know, they're not going to do like LBJ did, where we actually send a ship with American lives to confront the North Vietnamese. You know, Trump is going to send uh, electronics and technology, a drone. And it goes over the uh, Iranian territory, which is a violation of international law. And the Iranians shoot it down. And then Trump says, we're going to bomb the hell out of Iran. So we're going to go there. And I'm thinking, oh, gosh, okay. Gulf of Tonkin, here we go again. It'll probably take 40 years before we know the truth. But the question is, we're going to lose 62,000 American lives again. Um, even in the invasion of Iraq, we lost, I don't know how many, 6,000 American lives. It's just terrible, you know, how they'll justify it. And then the question of Iran, we have to look at that too. And I, we'll do that right after our break. But why don't we take a quick break here at the Arab Street Radio. I'm Ray Henry. Our number is 248. 557 3300. Our topics this morning will we have war in Iran? 
Is it to protect America or is it to protect Israel? Because, yeah, they go, oh, there goes that Israel thing again. You always bring up Israel. I said, I'm telling you that what we're doing in the Middle East has everything to do with what, what Israel wants to do. And, and they're, you know, some of the Arab Gulf nations are also working. One reason why they're cozying up to Israel is because they want to take out Iran. And I'm not saying Iran is a good country. Not at all. The people are good. The government, no, they're crazy. They're crazy. And we need to do something, but we should be smart. We're going to take a quick break. I'm Ray Hanania, and we're going to be right back right after these messages. If halal is important to your family, you can trust that Miramar will offer not only the highest quality halal products, but the best tasting and healthiest foods that can be placed on your family table with confidence. Miramar is the first and oldest halal certified food brand in America serving the Arab and Muslim community and offers a wide range of halal food products. Check out Miramar's halal food selection today by visiting Miramar's executive distributor Ziad Brothers Importing at www.ziad.com The Rama Relief Foundation provides humanitarian aid into areas inside of war-torn Syria as well as aid to the refugees who have fled to the neighboring countries in the Middle East. The foundation offers food baskets, container shipment, mental health, education, soup kitchens, and more. Go to ramarelief.org or call 248-990-4247. Any donation amount made to Rama will go to sustaining many lives. Call now, 248-990-4247. بتعرفوا شيء احنا كثير بنهتم بالمقبلات بالاكل الشامي واحنا بنهتم بالبهارات والتسبيكه في الاكل المصري واحنا نهتم هوايه باللحوم وجودتها بالاكل العراقي واحنا في مطعم عشتار نهتم بكم اعتمدوا علينا ايا كان نحن في عشتار نعرف ان لكل مذاق اسرار فنحن نقدم اجود انواع اللحوم من ملحمه عشتار الواقعه على 56865 راين رود عشتار قصه حضاره ترويها لكم اطباقنا المميزه في كل زياره تفضلوا بزيارتنا في 3625 East 50 Mile Road, Sterling Heights. مطعم عشتار بإدارة فادي بهنام وعلي البغدادي. 586-698-2585. Are you going to start a restaurant or grocery store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Naji Abood at 734-744-9796. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Naji Abood now, 734-744-9796. New concept products and design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New concept products and design, new location. 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Najee Abood, 734-744-9796. Life is a nonprofit charity that's provided humanitarian aid and development to people and communities for over 25 years, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Please help improve these efforts. Make your tax-deductible donation to Life now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. Welcome back to the Arab Street Radio and Podcast. I'm Ray Hanania, broadcasting from New York, Michigan, through 690 AM WNZK Radio live on radio, and also live online. You can go to uh, uh, hananiah.com or thearabstreet.org. You can get all these podcasts. You can also go to Layla Hosseini's website at arabradio.us. And there are two different links that also one at tunein.com where you can listen to WNZK 690 uh, AM radio live online. You don't have to be uh, in the Detroit region. Um, but yeah, it's easier, you know, driving around, you know, you're probably just coming home from having a great night out last night, Thursday night. That's a fraternity and college night, Thursday night. That's what people do on Thursday night is when the weekend starts for everybody in college. But we're talking about Iran and how, uh, last night president Trump ordered and then withdrew an order 
to attack Iran. Now, this guy, you know, I think it's he's he's Mr. Drama, Trump, right? This guy is Mr. Drama. He's a, when it comes to his rhetoric, he's like all over. He's nuts. He says crazy stuff all the time. Uh, but the truth is, the actual policies he pursues no different than anything that uh, the other crazies in the Democratic Party. Because we'll look at some of them, you know, how the Democrats, uh, you know, they were asked about uh, uh, human rights in Israel. And when you hear Kamala Harris, the senator from California, she says, oh, everything's good over there. Why are we criticizing Israel? The one guy that does stand up is this guy, Pete Buttigieg. I never get his name right. I'm trying to get him on so I can interview him, and maybe that'll help me correct his name. But he says, at least he acknowledges that Israel's human rights record is problematic. John Delaney, the former congressman from Maryland, uh, since, oh, you know, the poor Israelis, they're in a difficult situation. You know, human rights doesn't matter when it's your ally. And we're willing in this country to compromise principle when it has an advantage for us. And that's exactly what's happening in Iran and in the Middle East. Um, and, you know, we talked about how the uh, Gulf of Tonkin incident was staged. Uh, intentional provocation created to justify war. 62,000 American uh, more, I think it may have been 66,000, I don't have the exact number in front of me, lost their lives in Vietnam, um, and I don't want to disrespect them, I served during the Vietnam War toward the end, and my dad and my uncle served during World War II, so we're veterans, and I know it's very important, I just don't have it right at my fingertips right now, how many died, but the point is that a lie resulted in the deaths of so many Americans, and they're going to try to do it again with Iran. Now, the interesting thing about Iran is it has one other problem, unlike Vietnam. Okay, Vietnam was a problem of the French. And we stepped in because they believed that there was this domino theory where if the communists took Vietnam, then all of Asia would fall like dominoes to the communist horde, right? And, you know, the communists are not good people. Nobody's saying they are. But, you know, it's like we can't just say the truth that you know our government we just can't say the truth we have to exaggerate and create fake things you know so that we can justify the love and anger that we get americans to get whipped up emotionally to want to go to war and that's what they did they whipped up americans but in the case of vietnam but in the case of iran it was even worse because in 1953 kind of like egypt in 1953 I, except in a different way, the uh, people of Iran elected um, a new prime minister, Mohammad Mossadegh, and he was secular, and, and the problem that he had was he was going to nationalize Iran's oil industry, and the oil companies who were making money hand and fist you know, they were going into the Middle East, you know, since the 30s uh, and even earlier to take oil out of the Middle East. They were making profits like crazy uh, because, you know, the Arabs didn't realize the value of the oil at the time and that the Middle East is floating on like an ocean of oil. So the this new prime minister in Iran in 1953 gets uh, elected in a democratic process okay, that we supported and that the British, you know, spy agencies, uh, the British government supported. Um, and then when he said he was going to nationalize Iran's oil industry, we struck. We orchestrated a coup that resulted in his being taken out of office. And he was then replaced by Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. Remember him? The Shah of Iran. Now, the Shah of, the, of Iran was one of the most vicious, worst dictators. I, I'm not going to say he's uh, Hitler because, you know, it's hard. Hitler is in a special place in hell by himself. He's at a special level of, you know, uh, just uh, horror um, in this world. You know, singling out the Jewish people because they were Jews. And he massacred millions of of uh, innocent people throughout, you know, Russia and Europe. But Hitler had a special hatred for the Jews, 
And there's no way to even come close to comp compare anything to what Hitler did. You know, to, so it's called the Holocaust. He intentionally, and the reason that there were 9 million uh, non-Jews that were killed during World War II, but that was because Hitler was crazy, and it didn't matter whether they died or not. He just wanted to win the war, and he was killing everybody. But he intentionally orchestrated a process, you know, of uh, massacring, gassing, shooting, and murdering uh, innocent men, women, and children who were Jewish because he wanted to eradicate the Jewish uh, religion. And it's his hatred, that type of hatred, that really is different. So you can't compare, like, the Shah of Iran to Hitler. Um, but you can compare maybe to Stalin. Stalin was just horrible, too, right? This guy massacred all kinds of people for political reasons. It didn't matter what your religion or race was. He would just murder you. And he would often shoot them himself. But uh, the Shah of Iran, who was our guy, we put him in power um, in 1953 and to replace the elected, democratically elected Prime Minister Mohammed Mossadegh, the secular leader, whose only mistake was he wanted to nationalize Iran's oil industry. So we put the Shah in power, and the Shah massacres, murders, nearly one million people who challenged his government and he had and he used our weapons American weapons he used our support the Americans gave uh, you know as long as the Shah Iran wasn't going to take our oil which you know the oil companies were donating big money to President Roosevelt and all those people um, and to all the governments um, after that, in you know, that the, they were going to destroy this uh, Mohammed Mossadegh in 1953, and all the presidents after Roosevelt. But it was one of Roosevelt's. I think it was his grandson, nephew, who. And I have to look this up. I'll tell you in a second because it's important. Oh yeah, Kermit Roosevelt Jr. He's grandson of Theodore Roosevelt, okay, and a former CIA official, Kermit Roosevelt, the grandson of President Theodore Roosevelt, he orchestrated, he was the head of the coup that took out Mossadegh. So, you know, we think of these people like, oh, the Roosevelts were so great. Wow. And then, but when it comes to real democracy, oh, well, yeah, he kind of, you know, took down a democracy because, you know, we don't want the oil companies to be mad because if the oil companies are mad, they're not going to donate money to the elected officials, right? To the candidates like the Roosevelt's and all the other candidates in the world. The, even the Kennedys or the uh, Eisenhower or uh, LBJ, um, they wouldn't do that. So that, that history, that's, you know, and then, of course, what happened in 1979, right? Come on. Let's, uh, let's, the Iranian people rise up against Mohammad Rizda Pahlavi, the Shah, and force him to leave the country on January 16th, 1979. He flees the country, and now remember, these are just the people protesting. And of course, they welcome this Islamic religious leader, Ayatollah Khomeini, who turns out to be as bad as the Shah of Iran. Now, you can't blame the people for being angry with what was done to them. Now, in this case, it's this religious fanatic, the Ayatollah Khomeini, who comes back to Iran, and he takes over, and they impose Sharia law, and they massacre even more Iranians in the name of the Islamic Revolution. So, yeah, the, uh, the Ayatollahs are crazy, and today Iran's government are crazy. But when the government was someone that was crazy, who was our friend, we embraced them. Listen, we're going to take one more break um, right now. When we come back, we'll take some phone calls at 248-557-3300 to talk about Iran, what we think is going to happen. And does any of this history matter, or is it just, who cares? Let's just go bomb them, wipe, you know, wipe Iran off the map, which will never happen. But, you know, why don't we try it, no matter how many Americans we lose 
yeah, let's just go ahead and do it, right? Or do we look at all this and we say, hey, something's got to stop. And you can't blame this on President Trump and say, oh, he's different. They've been saying this, whether it's a Democratic president or Republican president, for years, for years. So it's nothing new. I'm Ray Hanania. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back to continue the conversation right after these messages. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab offers a great array of your favorite Mediterranean meals. Meals range from lamb specialties, shawarma sandwiches, seafood dinners, and they offer special big trays of your fair food, plus much more. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab address is 32839 Northwestern Highway in Farmington Hills. Their phone number is 248 248- Five three eight nine five five two. That number again is two four eight five three eight nine five five two. And the supermarket is open from eight a.m. to nine p.m. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab will definitely leave you satisfied. When it comes to reproductive medicine, IVF Michigan Fertility Centers are the recognized leaders. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and five other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. As a founding member of IVF Michigan Fertility Centers, Dr. Nicholas Shama is one of the leading reproductive endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. Dr. Shama has performed over 10,000 IVF cases and has helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. American board certified in both obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive endocrinology and infertility, Dr. Nicholas Shama is a very caring, compassionate, expert physician that understands not only the medical but also the emotional toil of infertility on his patients. When it's time, get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio. Call toll-free 855-952-9600, 855-952-9600. بتعرفوا شيء احنا كثير بنهتم بالمقبلات بالاكل الشامي واحنا بنهتم بالبهارات والتسبيكه في الاكل المصري واحنا نهتم هوايه باللحوم وجودتها بالاكل العراقي واحنا في مطعم عشتار نهتم بكم اعتمدوا علينا ايا كان نحن في عشتار نعرف ان لكل مذاق اسرار فنحن نقدم اجود انواع اللحوم من ملحمه عشتار الواقعه على 56865 راين رود عشتار قصه حضاره ترويها لكم اطباقنا المميزه في كل زياره تفضلوا بزيارتنا في 3625 East 50 Mile Road Standing Heights مطعم عشتار بإدارة فادي بهنام وعلي البغدادي 586-698-2585 586-698-2585 The Rama Relief Foundation provides humanitarian aid into areas inside of war-torn Syria as well as aid to the refugees who have fled to the neighboring countries in the Middle East. The foundation offers food baskets, container shipment, mental health, education, soup kitchens, and more. Go to ramarelief.org or call 248-990-4247. Any donation amount made to Rama will go to sustaining many lives. Call now, 248-990-4247. And welcome back. To the Arab Street Radio and Podcast. I'm Ray Hannon. Yeah, our number, 248 557 3300. Should we go to war with Iran? And do you believe what the government, it, it doesn't matter whether it's Trump, Clinton, or whoever, do you believe what the government says about Iran? Or are we doing this just because, you know, the government of Israel wants to do something? They hate the Iranians so much. It's unbelievable. Let's go to the phone line and say hi to our friend, Jerry Haba. Jerry. You are a dedicated listener. Thank you, Mr. Rehanania. Good morning to you, and thank you for taking my call. And I was surprised today because you mentioned you're going to be the second week of July. Yeah. And here, uh, <laughs> yeah, here, Rehanania. Yeah, I was supposed today, I believe, uh, usually Dr. Khamis, um, uh, usually she come in the 20th of every month. Yes, I maybe so. Doctor Sahar. Yeah, Sahar Hamid. But anyway, uh, Ray, uh, you uh, Are we make Hashem, maybe. What uh, a of Hashem sometimes, but Sahar always she comes the twentieth of each oh. month. Oh, great. Uh, uh, maybe they are busy, so uh, I I, I, I want to so. see. Ray Hanani, I cover the show again because I enjoy your radio talk show. No it's discrimination. Because usually, uh, Sahar Khamis, the problem is she never take a phone call. Uh, 
And that kind of disappoints me. Only all her life on her bridges, you know, her show they call the bridges. Yes. yes. She she only took once my call, and that was a miracle. Because ah. <laughs> usually she doesn't take. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell us about uh, Ray. Uh, Ray, my friend Ray. I will come to you, Ray, about yes. Iran. The yeah. Iran, Ray. Is an ancient age, uh, a nation with culture, civilization, a good history. Iran is a great country in the region, one of the oldest civilization uh, beside Egypt, you know, and the Niles and uh, the Chaldean, uh, Assyrian uh, in, 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 in Iraq, you know, the Mesopotamia, the land, you know. But uh, right, Iran. We love the Iranian people, like you said. They are great people, good people, good people educated. You know, Ray, there is a lot of doctors and engineers and scientists and professors. It's not how the fake media show Iran uh, like uh, people they are living in the, in the uh, dark ages. No, Iran is different. Ray, if you see some uh, Iranian uh, TV show, you see those Iranian who they left Iran from all the pressure of uh, those regimes, they are living and acting and produce and work in Europe or in America. They look, believe me with my respect to European and American, Iranian, they look more educated and more civilization than European and American. Believe me, they're young people, the students in the universities when they graduate. Uh, here they are, doctors, engineering, scientists, computer, uh, in art, in music. There are some uh, Iranian women, they look uh, movie stars uh, of, 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 of Hollywood from the Middle East. Yeah. So, I, I come to uh, 40 years since the regime revolution started in Iran. Like you said, Ray, in the late 70s, George Will uh, from the ABC News, yeah. they went to Paris and they make a meeting and, 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 uh, with uh, the Ayatollah Khomeini uh, at that time uh, when uh, Shah of Iran was Still, in his latest day, uh, like you say, he was in, in, in a grave condition because he was forced to leave uh, Iran. Yeah. You remember, Ray? Oh, yeah. And here, Ray, suddenly, in the late 70s, 1979, an airplane, airway by the name Air France, took the Ayatollah Khomeini from Paris to France traveling overseas yeah. and brought the savior, the savior of Iran, the Ayatollah Khomeini. And you remember how he was welcomed to Iran oh, yeah. as a spiritual leader, as a hero, uh, just like he just came uh, from the D-Day in Normandy. And uh, he was uh, living in exile before he lived in exile in Najaf and Karbala, one of the holy city in Iraq, when Saddam Hussein, the late president uh, in Iraq, was ruled. And the Ayatollah Khomeini, he was very lucky and very blessed that Saddam Hussein, he did not force him uh, to stay in Iraq, and uh, but he gave him the green light to yeah, leave right, right. safe and sound from those a uh, holy city in Iraq, well, Karbala. Well, let me uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, let me ask you a question, please, Jerry. Please um, go ahead. One, is there really any difference between the Shah of Iran and the Ayatollah when it comes to the number of people who were murdered under both of them? Believe me, right to me. There is no difference, I believe, exactly. as worse as Shah was, uh, uh, the Shah will look clean and an angel towards what happening under the regime of the Ayatollahs in Iran in the fourth decade. You know, right, uh, 
Shah of Iran, Muhammad Rava Pahlawi, he was a dictator. And like you said, there was no freedom of, uh, remember the Tuda Iran Communist Party, uh, you remember uh, during the uh, Intifada of um, uh, Mr. Muhammad uh, Musaddaq, uh, like you say, 1953, Mossadaq. yes, yes, yeah, Musaddaq. Musaddaq, if he was left alone, he could turn Iran to civilization country. He would have. Now, who knows whether he would have done any good, but you know what, Muhammad uh, Masadik never murdered people to take office. He was democratically elected. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, uh, the Shah, you know, the Shah of Iran was put in by force. The Ayatollah was put in by force. Um, exactly. And really because we were behind it, the United States. Exactly. Right. Uh, uh, Muhammad... Covid. And now Muhammad, we're upset yeah. because of what's there, Jeez. Uh, Ray, you know what Mohammed Mossadegh of Iran remind me when he nationalized the oil companies? What happened to the same mistake the late president of Egypt, Jamal Abdel Nasser, when he nationalized the canal Suez? And you know canal Suez? Yeah. If there was an agreement between France and Egypt uh, 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 that this can canal will be given to Egypt by the end of the 20th century. But the mistake yeah. he did, Jamal Abdel Nasser, President Jamal Abdel Nasser, he nationalized, and you remember uh, uh, what happened to Port Said, the city of Port Said, yes. the, the British and the France, Bank and then they say Israel, Israel too. Uh, uh, one Sulafi, the the three aggression again. You see, Jamal Abdel Nasser, with my respect to him, as a leader, he wasn't a good politician. And yeah. the biggest mistake he did, you remember, right? Yeah. When on one of his famous speech, when he said, "We gonna through the Jewish state in the Mediterranean Sea." Yes. See, Jamal Abdel Nasser, uh, God bless him, you know, he was not was a politician. Just he had no power to do anything. And I always make a joke about that. You know, my dad would say, and relatives would say, we're going to drive the Jews to the sea. And I would look at my dad and say, you're going to drive the Jews to the sea. You don't even drive me to school. That's not fair. Oh, so my God, what a beautiful. It was all, it's all phony, exaggerated, you know, stuff. It was emotion. Um, and that was the fall of Jamal Abdel Nasser, too, obviously. He had a big mouth. He was crazy. And they, they really, they, they didn't uh, understand Israel and what it was all about. And they underestimated Israel. Um, see, and all we've done is just made things worse. The Arab ab government... Absolutely, made, absolutely right. I agree with you. Look what uh, late uh, Egyptian President Jamal Abdel Nasser when he stick his nose in Yemen, you remember in Yemen there was a civil war and he was uh, trying to support the people against the Imam Badr who was rule in Yemen. And he create a, a, a civil war. Even Saudi Arabia, remember, uh, she involved uh, uh, with, 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 against Jamal Abdel Nasser. And you know Jamal Abdel Nasser, he hurt his country, he hurt Egypt, he got a lot of Egyptian soldiers killed yes. in, in yeah, the Arab yeah. Peninsula for no he's reason. Not a, he was not just, a good leader. Uh, Nasser because had he one good his thing. nose. Nasser when it had doesn't... one good thing. Nasser wanted to, uh, you know, create Arab nationalism. He was Arab. He wasn't Muslim. He wasn't Christian. He wasn't religious. He was secular. He wanted to be the Arab man. Listen, Jerry, I got to let you go because we got to uh, break. Uh, you, know, you, you, you know, Ray, Jamal Abdel Nasser, he was African before he was Arab. Yeah. Believe me. And, and, and you know, the, the, the history repeats itself. Look right now, uh, if you allow me just a few more seconds. Iran. Seconds. Go ahead. Sports. <laughs> Terrors to all over the country. What happened today in Yemen when they support the Al Houthi? Al Houthi, they don't have money, they don't have weapon. So Iran. What happened in Lebanon? They are supporting Hezbollah. What happened in Syria? They are supporting Bashar al-Assad regime. 
Even I'm not against Bashar al-Assad because he was, he didn't mind nobody's business. Uh, yeah. Syria was a good country. The people, they were happy. They were living. So what if Bashar al-Assad is a dictator? How many dictators right. there is all over the world? Well, there are so many Jerry, dictators. Listen, I got to let you go. I got to cut you off because we got to take right, a break. I love you voice. and God Thank bless you. you. And thank, thank you for Elijah uh, Husseini for his show, and to you, thank and to your producer, Mr. Mike Shepkak. God bless America. We'll talk to you later. You know what? As Arabs, we need a 10-hour show. I don't need one hour. I need 10 hours. I'm Ray Hanania here at the Arab Street Radio. we got more people on hold at 248-557-3300. We're going to take their calls. But first, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back right after these minutes. أيام زمان كان طعم الأكل غير كان جدي يجيب اللية لأكلة المحاشي والكبة المشوية بتعرفي اشتقنا لأيام زمان والطعم الطيب بس اليوم مع زيادة منتج بديل دهن الخروف الحقيقي بطعم اللية بيعطيكي نفس الطعم الغني والمميز مجفف معقم سهل الاستعمال وحلال مية بالمية يمكن استعماله في جميع الأكلات الشرقية ما عليكي إلا أنه تفتحي الظرف وتضيفي من طعم اللية واستمتعي باللقمة الشهية وصحتين وهنا Life is a non-profit charity that's provided humanitarian aid and development to people and communities for over 25 years. Regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background, when disaster occurs here or around the world, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Please help improve these efforts. Make your tax-deductible donation to Life now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. تعرفوا شيء احنا كثير بنهتم بالمقبلات بالاكل الشامي واحنا بنهتم بالبهارات والتسبيكه في الاكل المصري واحنا نهتم هوايه باللحوم وجودتها بالاكل العراقي واحنا في مطعم عشتار نهتم بكم اعتمدوا علينا ايا كان نحن في عشتار نعرف ان لكل مذاق اسرار فنحن نقدم اجود انواع اللحوم من ملحمه عشتار الواقعه على 56865 راين رود عشتار قصه حضاره ترويها لكم اطباقنا المميزه في كل زياره تفضلوا بزيارتنا في 3625 East 50 Mile Road, Sterling Heights مطعم عشتار بإدارة فادي بهنام وعلي البغدادي 586-698-2585 586-698-2585 When you're looking for the best in optical care, Dr. Imad Nakash is your doctor to see. With years of experience and thousands of successful procedures performed, you can trust your eyes to Dr. Imad Nakash. See Dr. Imad Nakash and his professional staff for your eye care needs. There is two locations to serve you. In Hazel Park, call 248-336-3937. 248-336-3937. In Rochester Hills, call 248-299-3937. That's 248-299-3937. And welcome back to the Arab Street Radio and Podcast. I'm Ray Hanani. It's June 21st on Friday, and our number is... 248-557-3300. We're taking calls. 248-557-3300. I think Saad is on hold. And, uh, yeah, Saad, if uh, you held, I really appreciate you hanging on through the uh, commercials. Hello? Hey, Saad. How are you? Good morning, man. Thank you for calling. Yeah, no problem. I've been, I've been on hold forever anyway, but uh, I, thought I was going to uh, have, have some comment about the subject, but I really forgot the subject because... Uh, <laughs> thanks for my previous uh, caller. He gave us a, a historical lecture. A history so I, I just, uh, yes. No, go so back to talking. Iran. Let me ask you a question. Should we attack Iran? Should the U.S. attack oh, oh, Iran? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, okay, so I think it's not going to be any any attack. Okay. Uh, because um, um, Trump won, a, won the second term. But I think yes. if he's going to win the second term, then it's going to be an attack. Uh, you think so afterwards? So yeah, he just he's not going to go to war uh, before uh, the election. I, I, that's, I, you know, that's interesting. I doubt it. So he's just flexing muscle now to make it look like he, he's going to yeah. do it, to whip yeah. everybody up, to be like threatening to show how tough he is, and maybe use that without going to war to win. That's a good point. Yeah, that, well, that could uh, be. I don't know if you heard about the, uh, the term, uh, the bees. That's the uh, Iranian uh, uh, foreign minister called the bees, which is the 
Benjamin Netanyahu, Bolton, Ben Salman, and Ben Zayed. All those <laughs> these are really in, 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 uh, like inciting, like yeah. or uh, well, you know, yeah. well, Listen, the Arab the Arab Gulf does not get along with Iran, but for good reason. That's not to say that we aren't responsible for what has happened in Iran, but the Iranians they're a problem. And they want to destroy, I think, the Arab world, especially Sunni Arabs. Don't you think? What I'm saying is, like, you know, uh, like Saudi Arabia or UAE, yeah. uh, Bahrain, yeah. they, want, they don't want to see uh, the current Iran or the current Ayatollah in power because, it's, uh, yes. you know, as I say, they instig instigate pe their pe own people on them. So, Yeah, and that's why, is it, and I think that's the reason why these Gulf states have opened the door to semi-relations with Israel, right? Because yeah. they're kind of creating this front. All of a sudden, they kind of push the Palestinians aside. Um, I don't. They haven't abandoned the Palestinians, um, but and I think Saudi Arabia still supports, you know, the Palestinians hundred percent. But I think the Saudis and Bahrain and the Gulf states want to use Israel to help undermine Iran, and they want to use the United States. The fastest way to the the fastest route to the White House, uh, it's it's uh, through Israel. Yeah, yeah. So if they if they if they want to get the you know the uh, the blessing of uh, Trump or the White House or whoever in charge, uh, it's gonna be uh, like you know through Israel. So this is what they do for now. Yeah, it, Israel has an unrestrained uh, control over this country. They influence when it comes to specific foreign policy in the Middle East, they rule. Now, they don't the control way, the United States, but they pretty much decide what we do when it comes to yeah. the Middle East. And, by the way, for our uh, friends, the listener, I mean, listeners, whether they are Jews or whatever, we're not against Jews. I mean, we, we, right, we I have agree. no problem. You're right. Yeah, we do have no problem with the, with the people as people. Yes, our problem the with, with, like, you know, the people who claim that they were suffered back in the 40s, yeah. they, they yeah. moved to to Palestine, and they put those uh, uh, innocent people under pressure, and uh, you know, and uh, you know, they suffered like because you know. Yes, absolutely, I agree. Yeah, but you know, they we, turn it around. They they twist it. They distort our words because we get people that are really angry. You know, sometimes who lead us, <laughs> and they use emotion and anger instead of logic sometimes. But yeah, what are you gonna I mean, do? See, I served. I served in, in the U.S. military. I, I I had friends. I mean, from all over. You know the faith and religion, so I don't, like, you know, we used to go and uh, attend there, whatever, and, you know, and, you know, we have, we, I have no problem with, with people, as, like, just because of their religion, you know? Yes, absolutely, yeah, I'm right with you 100%. Right. Yeah, right Sad, right. Thank, thank you so thank much Thank you very for much, calling. man. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, I appreciate bye. it. Bye. 248 I think we had a good discussion on uh, Iran and the history there, and the Gulf of Tonkin. I, I want to kind of just switch gears to one little, there's an interesting congressional race brewing here in Illinois in the uh, 3rd Congressional District. Uh, Dan Lipinski is the incumbent. He's a Democrat, very conservative Democrat. Um, and the 3rd District is very conservative. Uh, but a year ago in the last election, he almost was beat by Marie Newman, who is a uh, liberal uh, Democrat and uh, a woman, of course, and uh, she ran during that blue wave, which is the uh, you know the uh, rebound after the Republican presidential election. There's always a rebound when a Republican wins. Two years later, the Democrats take over the Congress. When a Democrat wins as president, two years later, the Republicans take over the Congress. So there was a big blue wave after Trump won. And uh, Marie Newman almost beat Dan Lipinski uh, because a lot of people viewed Dan Lipinski as being more conservative than regular Democrat. But I know he's a Reagan Democrat, very conservative. Um, he stands up for a lot of issues. But there's a third candidate now that entered the race, and uh, that's uh, Rush Darwish. And Rush is, uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned because one, I don't think Rush is probably a great, he's a great guy smart, intelligent. I don't think he can win. Um, and uh, it's going to make for an interesting race, but I think it's going to undermine Marie Newman and probably help Dan Lipinski. 
and I think Dan Lipinski is going to easily win uh, re-election. Let's go back to the phone lines at 248-557-3300 and say hi to Ted. Ted, thank you for listening and calling in this morning. Hello. Good morning. Hey, Ted. How are you? Okay. I just want to say earlier, uh, you commented on... Uh, Khomeini, you said yes. uh, that he he became worse than um, the, Shah. the Shah. Yes, and I agree with you. I am with you hundred percent. I, I I think he make uh, it smart. Yes. But I just want to bring to your attention that sure. we have over here in uh, Dearborn, Michigan, and all U.S. There's a big Shiite community in, in yeah. uh, De- Greater Detroit, right? I don't want them. I don't want them to get mad at you, because okay. because look, ninety uh, percent of them, yeah, they carry Khomeini idea. They are exactly like Khomeini. Exactly. Well, he, they listen. You're right in in this sense. But I don't want them to get Shiites mad at you. To believe that you know their politics should be dominating the region, not the Sunni Arab politics. Um, I'm not sure all of them, you know, they gravitate towards Iran. And, and, one, and one and more Khomeini. thing, and one more thing, I, yes. I cannot believe it that, that they have the idea of Khomeini, but they live in America. They should be living in Iran. You know, it's a big country. It's got a lot of money and everything. You know what I mean? So this but, is just a comment. Thank you. No, no, I get it. I, I get it. I think it's a good comment in, in the sense that, you know, when uh, the Shah was in power, there were a lot of Sunnis that were active in supporting him. And he was a murderous tyrant. So, you know, sometimes... Thank you. We Thank tend you, Ray. I'll make uh, space for others. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Listen, Ted, thank you very much for the call. I appreciate it. All right. Listen, um, we're toward the end of our show. Like I said, it'd be great um, if I could do like five hours. I, I used to be in WLS in Chicago for like 10, 12 years, I think. I used to do a live show every Saturday and Sunday, five hours, both days, taking phone calls. We would talk about politics, the Middle East, everything. In the meantime, listen, you can keep up with what I'm doing, what I'm writing by visiting my website at hanania.com. Just go there. You can get the podcast. I do one on the Middle East. And you can get the political podcast. I do one on mainstream American politics and election. I want to thank you for listening to the show. I want to thank Mike. And I will be back the second Tuesday of uh, July uh, after the 4th of July. I hope you all have a great 4th of July holiday. And I'll talk to you right after the 4th. You take it easy. Remember, go to Hanania.com. Bye-bye, everybody.